Yeah, um, we were fortunate that I've got a very um, sympathetic board. You know, with all these input costs that you have, it's very difficult to have a long-term view. Uh, we've been managing, despite that, to increase our R&D uh, by 20, more than 20% to about 30 million. Um, part of that was when necessary to, to reformulate many of our products which got, contained sugar. So that was a very important element. But also we launched a number of new products, still despite the fact that we're in this tough economic conditions. The second highlight for me was that we managed to consolidate our city deep um, operations, distribution uh, uh, facilities into our Clayville facility, which was quite a bit of an engineering uh, challenge for us. You know, you work with fresh products and you have to uh, move a factory over a weekend, so that was quite uh, interesting. But uh, uh, all in all, I think balanced approach, uh, high price increases, uh, lost a little bit of market share in some instances. So I think the challenge going forward is to try and, and rectify some of those uh, market share losses. We've got an uh, internal program. We, since listing, we've said that uh, all of the investments that we had in our production, our distribution, should yield uh, cost savings for us going forward. So we would like to take some of those cost savings that are now forthcoming through the system get some of that, put some of that back into the consumers uh, in pro products, uh, grow those volumes again, um, and some of the profits to, to, to rectify our own situation uh, so that our shareholders keep on having faith in us and keep on in, uh, investing in us. The main objective was to uh, really put the businesses back to the, the, st the stakeholders where, where it can add most value. So the drinking milk market, which is the fresh milk plus the long life milk, that's a volume driven market with very low margins, but it's a very important uh, part of our business because it, it keeps all of our facilities alive. What we've done is we're now transferring that drinking milk turnover and products to the farmers. They can then run it themselves, plus they can have direct relationship with the trade, sell it to the trade, and they can also uh, get other markets out there and still put it through our facilities. So we will still be doing the production and distribution and all of those facilities to them. What it will impact on us will be our income statement will look a lot more, a lot lighter. It will only be filled with value-added products, uh, value-added dairy and value-added non-dairy products. Um, so essentially, Clover is becoming a branded business um, that will use still a lot of uh, milk, but only in value-added products. So uh, very important. And then we are already... Um, doing a lot of services for, for a number of principles, and that will now just increase further. So the advantage for Clover long term, it focuses on the areas where it is good in, building brands, value added, and it leaves the, con the, the farmers where they can determine the price, which is important to them, and they can uh, grow the volumes uh, on their farms. So I think it's a win-win for both parties. The fact that we're transferring the business at no uh, cost to them is also a unique model. Uh, we'll just put through a management fee that will uh, let them break even. So in a way, we are still sharing in the profits of that business, but the cyclicality is taken out of our business in Clover. The, the shares in DFSA will be transferred to the farmers uh, on the 1st of July, but from the 1st of April to the end of June, we will run in parallel inside the business as if it's two organizations, just to make sure that uh, all the hiccups uh, are, if there are any, or sorted out.